Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. Presented by the Idiot Radio Network. Operating a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling. With guest interviews, news, results, and much more. Now here's your host, Stephon Devereaux. Welcome to the Devereaux Committee. We are back. Another awesome show planned out for my fans this week. Man, after last week, I mean, you know, I thought that we had a pretty good show. Ended on a high note. Listen to my man Sam Houston's uh, latest single. Gave a shout out to one of my heroes growing up. Um, and then it was like an avalanche of news just hit me after we went off the air. I really wanted to go back on, uh, but I said, okay, you know, I wasn't allowed. <laughs> so, uh, man, but what a week. So, as I said, we went off the air. And I got hit with the sad, sad, actually it was devastating news. And it was one after another, after another. But um, we're going to start with, uh, like I said, one of my heroes. Uh, and it was just so funny, you know, because I was just saying last week, man, congratulations. He's still fighting. He's fighting. But um, lost my man, Brickhouse Brown. That was devastating, you know. Um, and then we, I had to wait a minute first because here was the thing, you know, when he went uh, on Sunday, it took a second to just let that sink in because there was rumors that went around a few weeks before that said he was gone and uh, the dude kicked out at two and a half, they said, two and three quarters. And uh, he went on Facebook, put some pictures up, and so we was feeling good. But then did my digging and found out, yeah, uh, this time it was true. So eh, it was okay. It was a little salty because, you know, like I said, uh, he was a hero. And I got to interview Brickhouse last year. You can check out the Devereux Committee Archives which is on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you want to check it out at. Um, it, it was devastating. You know, that's pretty much what I'm going to say about that. If we're going to miss him. And, man. So um, fast forward about an hour later, two tops maybe. Uh, some other rumors were going around that – the son of Jerry the King Lower, Brian Christopher. Brian Christopher. I mean, Memphis took a beating this week. Let's be real. Memphis took a beating this week. Brickhouse, Brian, man. You know, Memphis took a beating this week. And I won't get into the reports, you know, how he died and so forth, because that's none of my business. I've talked off the air about this to plenty of people, and I'm going to leave my opinions off the air concerning Brian Christopher because it's not my place. Jerry Lawler's dealing with something really heartbreaking right now that no parent should ever have to deal with. And we'll leave it at that. But Brian Christopher, man, I grew up watching Brian Christopher as well. He's not that much older than me. He was not that much older, older than me, but um, I grew up watching him. And I didn't realize, you know, when he first came out that he was the king's father or son. I didn't realize the king was his father. I really thought that was cool, you know, when – People start talking about it on little dirt sheets and stuff, and that's when I start getting into dirt sheets. But um, kid, he just every time I see him in my mind, 
She just had that that conniving little smile on his face to where one minute he looked like he was just having so much fun and he was using, but he was using that smile to con you, you know, uh, and that was pretty much his gimmick. From what I've been told, I've never had a chance to meet Brian Christopher, but from what I was told, uh, he was a total opposite. You know, he was dealing with some legal issues recently, and let's just say that uh, I don't think it's my place to get into that. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. But I'm not going to do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Not, not, yeah, because I have some opinions on this. But I want to get into uh, the big controversy a little bit later. Okay? I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But uh, so let's go back to Sunday. Fast forward a few hours later. Oh, my goodness. Now, this one, you know, this one was painful as well. But I had a new – he was sick, and – um. You know, I got some friends who were close, who was very close to him, and they were saying he was sick and he was going through some health issues. And, um, but Nikola Volkov, the Russian bear himself, one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. Now, I debated on playing Nikola Volkov singing, you know, the Soviet Union's national anthem years, that, you know, when he used to do this, stand in the middle of the ring with Iron Sheik, I debated on playing it, and I was going to play it, but but there's a political climate out here. No, <laughs> no, 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 because I do not want to have people coming at me, because I know how them damn liberals are, and I don't want them coming at me. Oh no, 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 no. Tinted, by the way. But anyway, um, but the Russian bear, man, Nikolai Volkov. See, you know the. When I was talking about Brad Christopher and Brickhouse Brown, I was talking, my, my tone was a little bit more sad. You know, you could hear it probably. I don't know. You tell me. But um, Nikolai Volkov, <laughs> I have nothing but fond memories of this man. The character was incredible. It was probably one of the most you know, incredible characters of its time because let's think 84, 85, 86, 87, eh, United States and Russia, eh, same thing we, we're going through now. But you had this one guy, Nikolai Volkov, who was standing in the middle of the ring with the Iron Sheik and classy Freddie Blassie. And he would sit there and sing his song and he would sing the anthem. And then afterwards, the Iron Sheik would say, Russia, number one, Iran, number one, USA, pooey, spit down. Oh, my God, that was probably <laughs> some of the greatest moments as a kid watching this happen well, as a wrestling fan because you knew that the good guys were coming in and they was going to whoop on them. You knew. Oh, you knew. It didn't matter. Hawk Duggan, Jim Duggan, whatever. These guys were going to get beat up. <laughs> And that's what was fun about Nikolai Volkov and Iron Sheik. They were very entertaining. Two very serious men outside of the ring. But when they got in the ring, man, they were just some fun guys to watch. And you put Classy Free Blassie with those two, it was an incredible run. Those three men... You know, I will always be remember those three men because I think I was seven, six, seven years old when I started watching uh, the WWE. Uh, so eighty four, eighty five, on a full time basis, um, and Hawk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling Saturday Morning Cartoon Show. You know, Classy Freddie Blassie and Iron Sheik. And Nikolai Volkov, they had, you know, their characters. It was so awesome to watch as a child. You know, we we as adults now who watch this sport, you know, this is why we are so critical of the business we are watching right now. Because when we grew up, these people meant something to us. Does Rusev mean anything to you? 
cool on social media. It's nice to have the Rusev Day. But can you imagine if we had a Nikola Volkov? These are men, I'm talking today, in today's business. These are men who believed in that word, kayfabe. Nikolai Volkov, man, he kayfabed until the day he died, I heard. So I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. This guy right here, that's what you call legendary. That's what you call a real professional wrestler. A real professional wrestler. Not these damn guys you see now, these indie guys who do nothing but talk to each other on social media. Hey, man, I had a great match. Hey, yeah, it was a great match. These guys are just talking. They're talking to each other. They just beat the hell out of each other in the middle of the ring for over a half hour, maybe, excuse me, (laughs) 10 minutes, sorry. And now they're talking about it on social media. Like, they're just the best of friends. Why? Because they sometimes are the best of friends, but let's be real. They have no understanding of the word kayfabe. They have no understanding of selling a gimmick, selling a character. See, the problem with these wrestlers today compared to the older guys, like a Nikola Volkov, like a Brickhouse Brown, and I'll even go Brian Christopher to an extent because he was taught this business, okay? But the difference between these guys now and those guys is that they made you care about them. Let me repeat that. They made you care about them. You know how I know this for a fact? Because when these men passed last Sunday, the business, the business, the wrestling business shut down. Give me three indie wrestlers or three wrestlers that these can't come on. Let's be real. Three wrestlers. One day. Give me three indie wrestlers. God forbid this happens, but give me three indie wrestlers all in one day. Do you think the wrestling business is going to give a damn? No. Why? Because they don't give a damn about these guys. Unlike the guys we grew up with. And I know a good bit of my audience, I know the demographics because I study the numbers, of course. But you know I'm right. You don't believe me? You can email me, stephwondevereau at gmail.com, and you can tell me how I'm wrong. I don't know, man. If you're listening live, you can give me a call at 929-477-1671, and I'll give you the floor. Do my But we care about the guys we knew, we grew up with. And we knew nothing about their personal life. We wanted to learn about their personal life because we knew nothing about it. Why should a wrestling fan care about the wrestlers today? We know everything about them. There's no reason for me to want to. See, when I was a kid, where Ric Flair said he was flying here, flying here, flying, he did this and did that, man. That was an exciting life to me. You know why I felt it was exciting? Because I didn't see it. I just heard him tell that. When I was a kid, I wanted to see what Russia looked like because Nikolai Volkov was talking about Russia. You feel what I'm saying? These kids today, these boys today, these ladies today, man, they tell you everything that they do. I know everything they're doing. Why? Because they're on social media. Social media all day long. So why should I care? Why should I care to watch them in a ring either? 
Can you imagine if social media was around during the NWO days? How about the Attitude Era? Which was still, to me, the NWO days. But let's be real. Can you imagine if social media was around during those days? There would be no Attitude Era. There would be no NWO. Or it would, actually, there would have been, but it would not have created what it created. It was an atmosphere that wrestling fans was able to get behind and say, oh, my God, they wanted to learn and know so much about these things, the wrestlers, the characters, what they were doing, but they, can't, they couldn't find out. So you know where they went? They went to the dirt sheets. The dirt sheets, yes. You know who the, the people who are probably more upset about social media right now is the dirt sheets. Because they, back then, they were your social, they was your social media. Within the wrestling fan base, they were, it was your social media. You went there to find out who was doing what. You sent a letter in. Hopefully your letter made it to the, uh, to the newsletter. If it didn't, hey, it didn't. But you still kept trying because you wanted to get heard. Business has changed now. At the time, the fans think they're the stars now. This would have never went down in the days of Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik. Never. Never. Can you see, can you imagine, and I'm really not a big fan of his because, you know, of his history outside of the ring, but can you imagine these fans trying to take over a Dick Murdoch match? I can literally see Dick Murdoch go into the audience right now and beat the hell out of somebody. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could. Uh, but anyway, we're going to move on. Um, there was a little bit of a controversy that came out this past week as well uh, over one of the deaths, and that was the death of Brian Christopher. Now, one of my mentors, and I'm going to be biased here. I'm going to be because this man is one of my mentors. One of the man, this guy sat down with me and told me more about the wrestling business and how to live life outside of the wrestling business. Anybody else? And he gets the he has the oh man, he gets the worst rap. But I know this man personally. I know what he's done for this business. I know what he can do for this business. But he's blackballed, of course, because he's too controversial. But the thing about it is, he's probably one of the most over men in this business. Why? Because of what I just said about Nikolai Volkov, Brian Christopher, and Brickhouse Brown. And that is, fans care about him. They care about him. They want to know what he's doing. Because why? He doesn't show you anything. But when he does open that door to crack it, just a little, just cracks it a little bit, this is what happens. Oh, man. So, New Jack. Ooh, my man. New Jack went on Twitter, and I'm not going to repeat exactly what he said, but I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit. He pretty much told Jerry Lawler to die like his son. Man. And New Jack has been getting destroyed in social media because of this. Now, this isn't the first time I've heard New Jack say anything about, I mean, say something about uh, Jerry King Lawler. This is not the first time. I know how New Jack feels about Jerry Lawler. And I'm pretty sure a lot of other people know how he feels as well. Because New Jack tells you how he feels. If you get, you ask him, he'll tell you. Sometimes he'll tell you without asking. But this is who Jack is. A lot of people have some very, very, very negative feelings about Jerry Lawler. You can go online or go on YouTube and search it. It's not hard. It's not hard. Do I agree with New Jack doing what he, what he did at the time? Well, probably. I mean, look, I wouldn't have done it. 
I mean, sometimes I would do stuff like that. But, see, the thing is, people don't understand. When you have a personal beef with somebody, they don't give a damn. And New Jack is a person who just don't give a damn anyway because that's how he lives his life. This man is taking more bumps than a lot of these guys I've seen. And he's still here to this day. His body's taking a beat. He's still here to this day. He came up in a time where the Attitude Era, NWO, they were taking pieces of what he was a part of and putting it into their shows. Why? Because he was one of those people who was out there doing it, put in that place on the map. And that place is called ECW. I'm not going to sit on here and disrespect my mentor. Just like I won't disrespect Jerry the King Lawler. But I just want people to understand something. Just because someone has a beef with somebody doesn't mean it's your place to start jumping on this man. If you don't like Moon Jack, then, then just let it go. Leave him alone. But here's what I say. The guy is accessible. If you got beef with him, I'm pretty sure he'll have a conversation with you and tell you his point. You may not agree with it, but he's one of the few people who would actually do that. And that's why I respect him so much. I love the man. I'm sorry for what happened to the Lawler family. But I'm just not even going to, I'm not going to take choose a side. Of course, I can't do that. But I just want people to understand what's going on. Now, then who New Jack is? Because he's actually a, a dude's cool as hell. I'm not going to lie. He's never done a bad thing to me. Never. And I've had people who has done bad things to me in the wrestling business. And they're still walking around like they're, you know, their stuff don't stink. New Jack never done a bad thing to me and he doesn't act he doesn't walk around like acting like that he's a real dude sometimes he just says what he feels i'll move on <laughs> oh man so look so we have some uh and i'm not a big raw fan i'm sorry i'm not a big raw fan you know so i'll dvr it if something comes up i'll go check it out but whoo man i can't believe what i seen this past week on raw But it's not fair, though, either, because Paul Heyman's probably the greatest manager of our generation. Do I believe he's better than Bobby Heenan? Yep. Do I believe he's better than Jimmy Hart? Yep. Do I believe he's better than Slick? Yep. Do I believe he's better than uh, Classy Freddie Blassie? Yep. Do I believe, see, I'm going through all the managers, Skander Akbar, maybe not Gary Hart. Nope, he's better than Gary Hart. So when I say what I'm about to say, I, I I just hope that they, they do this. So Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman gets yeah, assaulted a little bit by Brock Lesnar, who's playing his character of he's he's tired of people eating off of him, whatever. That's cool. Nice guy. I like it. Because Brock's my dude. You know I mess with Brock. That's my homie. All right? But let's go back. So now, what were we – I think I was trying to talk last week – last season, excuse me, about the evolution of Roman Reigns. SummerSlam, we got Roman Reigns taking on Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar has just beat up Paul Heyman. Brock Lesnar is on his way out of the WWE so he can resume his UFC career. He'll be back, of course, in the WWE. I'll give it about two years, tops. I mean, he's making too much money not to go back. But Brock Lesnar beats up Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman does the one thing that Brock Lesnar did not think he would do. And that was actually go and help Roman Reigns win the championship. That's what I'm predicting on SummerSlam. I am predicting Paul Heyman is going to assist Roman Reigns in becoming the universal champion. And this will turn Roman Reigns heel. And this will make Roman Reigns 
the biggest star in professional wrestling for the next two years. A Paul Heyman next to a Roman Reigns, sick. A heel Roman Reigns, sick. Come on. Now, you know as well as I do, Roman Reigns should have turned two years ago. You know that as well as I do. No, of course not. The WWE, they dragged their feet. They didn't turn John Cena when he should have turned, so they're not going to do the same thing with Roman Reigns. Until now. Because it's needed. The WWE has grown stale. Well, dot com has grown stale. Because, you know, after they sat there and did what they did two weeks ago on SmackDown and, 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 and fired my buddy James Ellsworth, my hero, your hero, our hero, James Ellsworth. Okay, I'm going to calm down. Yeah. I'm sick. Hashtag rehire Ellsworth. But anyway, Roman Reigns becomes universal champion with the help from Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman will then mold Roman Reigns into being a real champion. An old school like heel champion. With Paul Heyman as the mouthpiece. Money. But you can't do nothing with that. But make money. Oh, that's just money. Okay, so we're going to move on to some more money here real quick. Because I'm a little upset because somebody cost me a couple dollars. But guess what? My plan is... My plan has always worked, Mr. Matt Bish. So at September 1st, I will be at the Collier Volunteer Fire Department in Uniontown. And I will confront you, Matt Bish, for what you did to me this past Friday. Man, that was just cold-blooded, bro. (laughs) So it's cool. It's cool. But I will be... In Uniontown, September 1st, to call your volunteer fire department, and I will confront Matt Bish. And I think I want to go off on him. Really, uh, I don't think I have any other choice but to go off on him. So, what I would like to, for you to do is stay tuned to the show for the next few weeks, and uh, I'll keep you updated on that. But don't forget, September 1st, call your volunteer fire department in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Now, I'm about to go off it. I'm about to be done because it's a Saturday, or excuse me, it's a Sunday, and it's going to be relaxation day. And uh, I think I'm going to watch some YouTube rest, some wrestling on YouTube because I get, yeah, kind of get caught up in it. But I do want to debut my new song, which is This Love We Breed. And I want to thank you for joining us this week here on the Devereux Committee. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, fans.
laugh at them. Something like this to be used as perfect jokes. As motivation through all this hate and only make it stronger as we deal with situations like these. As we ground for cheese to build upon this legacy. I see so much stuff in front, but not from us. Even though we get what we want, y'all dudes punt. While we go for it, taking many chances just to stay legit. Can't give these haters any ammo. When they see you happy, they get cut broke. Friends become enemies cause they jealous. Your jealousy the fire that's in my belly. To make sure she's guarded like a queen. Cause haters do anything to run the dream. In this hateful place, keeps us protected, my baby. Cause these haters, the kid rocks, we're going. No stop. This love is free in this hateful place. Yeah. 